Well, Ed, we're back for part six. I I think we're going to call it here, man. I think it's going to be the last uh, the last <laughs> one. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. We keep going down these interesting side trails, but uh, but but in this part, we've been uh, we're going to focus on the client side of uh, certificates and certificate troubleshooting. We were focused on the server side, but now we're going to move things to the the client side. So set us up. Right. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, exactly as you said. So what I'm going to do is show you a few commands, a few options you have uh, to look at the. SL connection from the client perspective, just to see if it's doing what you think it's doing uh, and to verify if it's doing something wrong or whatever the case. So uh, we spent part five showing you some, some, some ways to verify what is the server doing? What is the server sending me? Uh, what we're going to do next is verify what the client is doing. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use uh, a second terminal screen uh, just because it makes it a lot easier. So two Linux terminals, nothing too, spent, too special. What we're gonna be doing on this terminal to the right is using the SSL dump utility. So I, I imagine a lot of you will be familiar with the TCP dump utility. TCP lets you, TCP dump lets you uh, see the packets that are sent on a particular NIC of your server or your computer. SSL dump does the same thing, but it's tailored to SSL. So uh, the command I'm gonna use, and we do have to be an admin user, so I'm gonna do this using uh, super user SU. The command I'm gonna use is dash NN I, and I'm gonna specify a NIC, in this case, ethernet zero. The NN removes or disables the automatic resolving of like MAC addresses and IP address, the domain name. So just make things a little bit snappier. Keeps them as uh, raw numbers, yeah. Exactly, it gives me just the raw numbers. Uh, I'm gonna use dash N and dash H. Dash H shows me the full header and dash N tries to parse additional fields in the actual SSL negotiation. Uh, now, there's a bunch of other arguments you can feed to SSL dump, but this is what I typically start with. You can do a man SSL dump to uh, take a look at all the other arguments that exist. Cool. And then from there, I'm just going to hit enter. It's going, it's, what did I do wrong? Extra N. I haven't used SSL dump for a while, so I don't remember the command line switch as well. Doesn't like N. Oh. <laughs> You Linux folks might get upset at me. I did uh, I did su in the command instead of sudo sudo in the command. You know, we, I saw that and my brain went, wait, sudo, right? And then I was like, well, no, I think su is a thing too, isn't it? And I just <laughs> I, I, I couldn't couldn't remember. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I teach SSL, I, I not at, not yeah. Linux. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So as soon as I hit enter, it looks like nothing's happening, but nothing's happening because there aren't any SSL connections being sent right now by my client. So this is the same, it's kind of right where we left off on part five. We had just pulled down the certificates for you know, thousand sands, for Ethan Banks, for some expired websites, et cetera, et cetera. We pulled those certificates down by doing OpenSSL S client, which told OpenSSL to act like an SSL client. And we had it connect to a particular website. Let's go with paypal.com on a particular port. What you'll notice is as soon as I hit enter, you're gonna see a lot of cool stuff happen on the screen to the right. So I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, and it's going to initiate that connection. And what you're seeing on the right is essentially the output, the debug of that particular SSL connection. And it starts right here. Now on the left, I'm just going to close out of that. Now I do want to scroll up. Sweet. So this was a TLS 1.3 connection. And the reason I'm bringing that up is TLS 1.3 changes the handshake a little bit. So uh, if you're familiar with looking at TLS 1.2 and prior handshake, you're going to see the TLS 1.3 is a little bit different. In fact, let's go ahead and do a TLS version 1.2 request just for kicks. So I'll do the exact same command, except I'm also going to add the argument TLS 1 underscore 2, I believe, is what I want to do. And now I did a TLS version 1.2. And if I scroll down, uh, this is the content of the new TLS session. It starts right over here. So the first thing the client sent is a client hello. In the client hello, there's a bunch of different fields. Uh, one of the fields included that the client supports all the way up to version 3.3. That's SSL version 3.3, which correlates to TLS version 1.2, which follows uh, what, I, what I told it to do in the OpenSSL command. Then my client specified a bunch of cipher suits, a list of, what is that, about 30 or 40 different cipher suits that the client supports. Uh, and the idea is the server took a look at the entire list and picked one of them. Uh, if we look over here on the left, we can actually see which one that the server picked was the ECDHE RSA AES128 GCM SHA-256. That's a lot of letters and, and we picked that apart in the course. So uh, for now, 
I'll just throw this out there that if you're a server admin, you can control what ciphers this server will recognize and work with. So it's possible if you get too narrow in the, in the ciphers you support, you're cutting off some clients that don't have a matching cipher that it can deal with. Yeah, absolutely. You can even you can even specify which ciphers you are planning to suggest in the OpenSSL command in the OpenSSL S client command that we did. You can say, "Hey, only send this cipher just to see if the server supports it," or or whatever the case. In any case, let me scroll back down. Cool. So this this was where the cipher was selected, and it's going to be in this list somewhere. Some of you might have already seen it. I'm going to continue, but it's in there somewhere. Uh, what you'll see is the server is going to echo back the selected cipher. So the OpenSL command tells us the selected cipher over here. But if we scroll down a little bit further in the server hello, this is where the server was like, cool, of the list of 30 ciphers that you sent me, this is the one that I want to do. And you'll see it matches what OpenSL tells me over here on the left. Some other in interesting things from the client hello, the client sent a host name of paypal.com. Uh, this extension is known as, as SNI, Server Name Indicator. What happens is when you make an SL connection, you say, hey, I'm connecting to this IP address, but I'm looking for the certificate for paypal.com or whatever. The idea there is you can have a single server host certificates for multiple websites. And in the server name indicator field is where the client says, I'm interested in you know, website A or website B, and you give them the right certificate. So that's what's happening with that extension right in here. The server now sends, this indicates the server is sending something to the client. Uh, if we scroll back up to where this started, notice here, this is the client sending something to the server. Server sent something to the client. It's the server hello inside the server hello. The server echoes it can do TLS 1.2. The server selects a cipher suite and the server confirms the server name extension or confirms that it supports SNI. Then the server sends to the client the actual certificate. And if we take a look, this is the actual content of PayPal's certificate. Uh, it's telling you that the subject you know, includes these attributes and the common name is paypal.com. I don't think it actually parses the subject alternative name. It doesn't. So it just tells you that the extension existed in the certificate, but it doesn't actually tell you what was the actual contents of that certificate. But we showed you how to parse that from a certificate in part five, the last part. Yeah, all this is stuff in the certificate. And then the server sends the server key exchange. Uh, the key exchange that we're doing is Diffie-Hellman, ECDHE, that stands for elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. And to do Diffie-Hellman, both the server and the client contribute to the final key. And so here you're seeing the server send its copy of the, of the key of the Diffie-Hellman client of the key exchange. Uh, you'll see a few packets later, the client sends its version, its contribution, we'll say, to the diffie -Hellman key exchange in that packet right there. But here what you're seeing, then you see the rest of the handshake, right? Uh, the server sends server hello done, client says client key exchange, change server spec, handshake, change server spec, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're interested in a deep dive into what each of those messages are and, and, and what happens and what is being sent and what is being done with all that, I'd point you towards the course. Uh, it isn't something I can very simply summarize in, in a couple of minutes other than to say, this is how the client and the server establish keys to establish a server connection. Now, Ed, for people who are watching the magic that just happened with SSL dump, where we you know, gain promiscuous access to the NIC and we're looking at the packets fly by and SSL dump is doing some sort of a, of a decode and going, wait a minute, did we just like, like break encryption and spy on privileged information? We, we didn't. Could you explain what happened there? Yeah, great question. So, so what we did was essentially just looked at what was on the wire. So this is no more or less secure than actually browsing to paypal.com using a web browser. Um, all we've done is take a look at what, what, what's happening on the wire. Now, there are <clears throat> options you can do in OpenSSL where you actually, since OpenSSL is acting as the client, OpenSSL has access to the, to the decryption keys because it's, it's doing the actual decryption on the, other, on the other side of the SSL connection. SSL dump does not. So what you see on the right is essentially the wire. What you see on the left is the other end of the, well, it's your end of the SSL connection, and therefore you have all the session keys. Uh, this master key is the keys to the kingdom. Anybody who has this information will be able to decrypt anything sent in this session. Now, in, in our cases, all we've been sending is just the letter Q and, and closing it. So nothing insecure has been sent, right? But 
this is the master key that protected that particular session. And if we did another session, uh, you'll see that the master key is going to change with every single session. So this was the master key for this particular session. We'll look at, we'll note the last four characters, BD10. If I do, uh, so I'll hit enter a couple times. I'll do up arrow, do the exact same connection as before. Do quit, scroll up, and we'll see that this time the master key is very different. So the master key changes with every single SL session. And if you're not understanding as you're looking at this, what the distinction is here, a lot of what we see on the right-hand side of the screen, again, what we see on the wire, that's been uh, encrypted in some way, things like key exchanges. Well, there's a secure protocol behind that that is making that process secure. And just seeing, you can know that a key exchange is happening maybe, but you don't know what those keys are because there is encryption that is protecting that exchange of information. So if you're a man in the middle that is able to see what's on the wire, you're still not gonna be able to decrypt that information. Uh, you need more information. You need a private key. You need a master key, you know, depending on what it is and where in the conversation you're trying to jump in. Yep, absolutely. So if your client was presenting errors that indicated something went wrong from the client perspective, this is probably what I would try and do just to fully verify what's happening on the wire. So I would redo the SL connection using OpenSSL while running SL dump, just to see what's actually happening on the wire. Uh, now, since this is WSL, it's a VM hosted on my Windows box. I can't run an SL connection on my browser and have the VM actually catch it. But if this was like a native Linux or a Mac OS or something like that, this would catch anything SL also done by a web browser. So you have some cool options to really see behind the scenes what's actually happening on the wire in the SL world, uh, even done with a web browser. Well, Ed, this was, I think, the last part in this series. I mean, we could go on because, dude, you're you're you have a head full of knowledge about this stuff, and we could you know, draw so much more out of it. But but if we call the series here, then we should close up by reminding people where they can find uh, more stuff Ed, from Ed, including the OpenSSL cheat sheet, which is a freebie from you, right? Yes, absolutely. So the OpenSSL cheat sheet, let me actually pull it up. Cool. So you can download the OpenSSL cheat sheet. Uh, from pracnet.net slash OpenSSL. Now, Ed, if people um, want to interact with you or have questions about this, of course, they can leave comments on any of the different uh, YouTube uh, videos that we've released here. And all, you're also on Twitter. You've uh, picked up a whole yeah. bunch of people on Twitter with your your fairly <laughs> shiny new account. Yeah, yeah. Just joined the, the Twitterverse like a, a month ago or something like that. Uh, my handle is Ed underscore Pracnet. My website is practicalnetworking.net. It's a blog. I publish network engineering or security articles. Uh, the TLS course that I create, you can access over here, practnet.net slash TLS. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's fun. We go super, super deep into the into the TLS and SSL world. So if you're a Packet Pushers follower and you, you subscribe to the Heavy Networking podcast, uh, Ed and I did a, a TLS 1.3 discussion where we went on for, I don't know, an hour and a half or two of that podcast. We went we went at it pretty hard, Ed. Just go into the heavy networking section on packetpushers.net. You can find that show that Ed and I recorded together to get a taste of what all he covers in that course. Uh, a lot of great material. Ed, thanks for spending the time here with us. Again, the original conception was uh, you know a 10-minute overview and it turned into Oh, I don't know, two or three hours of content the way this has gone. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge here. Sure. And if you're out there watching this, you know, follow Ed, check out his courses. There's a lot of great stuff there that he's offering uh, to you. For sure. Thanks, Ethan. Appreciate the opportunity. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.